What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic and we are finally reviewing the Epson LS11000 and Epson LS12000 projectors. Now if you're not familiar with these projectors or Epson projectors in general, these are gonna be kind of a direct replacement for the older Epson 5050UB and Epson 6050UB projectors from a few years ago. So the 5050UB, if you're not familiar with that, is a really popular with home theater enthusiasts considering it has great black levels, great input lag sensitivity for gamers, as well as bright colors colors. The LS12000, considering it's going to be more like the 6050UB was, you're only going to be able to get this from certain dealers or certain installers. So if you go to the store, you're probably not going to be buying this projector unless you're going to have somebody come and professionally install it. The older Epson 5050UB was retailed for about $3,000. The now <laughs> replacement for that, which is the LS11000, is going to retail for $4,000 and the LS12000 retails for $5,000. So if you're interested in buying either any of these projectors that I talk about in this video, be sure to check our channel affiliate projectorscreen.com to make sure you're getting the best deal on it. And even though I have both the LS11000 and 12000 here with me, I'm going to be focusing primarily on the LS11000, but I will go over the LS12000's performance and differences later in the video. So aside from looking very similar to the old 5050UB, the LS11000 is pretty much the same size, measuring just over 20 inches wide, nearly 18 inches deep, around 7 inches tall, and weighing around 28 pounds. It still has the motorized lens in the front center with vents on the front sides with the IR receiver on the bottom. It has the power and source buttons on the right side along with an air intake vent. There are no buttons on the top even though you will find the indicator lights on the far corner and the back of the unit contains the control panel as well as all of the ports. So it has a full size USB port, a service port, a 12 volt trigger, ethernet jack, another USB port labeled optical HDMI which can be used for HDMI cables that need additional power, two HDMI 2.1 ports which support up to 4k at 120 hertz as well as an RF S232 port. So aside from size, what new features do you get with the LS11000 over the 5050UB? Well, the LS11000 is still using Epson's 3 LCD technology, but they're now using a new pixel shifting system that takes native 1080p panels and a precision glass shift plate doing a 4X pixel shift, allowing it to produce 4K resolution on the screen. Aside from the new pixel shifting system, it also ditches the old lamp-based system for a blue laser phosphor light engine. Now, unfortunately, the new laser system doesn't produce any additional brightness and it's actually slightly dimmer producing 2500 ANSI lumens compared to 2600 on the older 5050 UB. The only feature that's missing is 3D which I know is a deal breaker for my team 3D guys out there but I suppose it might be able to make up for this in image quality. Now one thing that sets higher end Epson projectors apart from others is their flexibility and installation features. Coming from cheaper DLP projectors, the first thing I noticed and came to appreciate was motorized lens shift, motorized focus, and lens memory. This means you can not only install the projector off center from the screen, but you don't even have to mount it upside down on the ceiling. You can mount it up on a high shelf with it right side up if you prefer. And the motorized focus allows you to focus the projector using the remote so you can stand close to the screen and easily dial the focus in. And lens memory is gonna allow you to use the projector with two different aspect ratios. So let's say during the day you want 16 by nine while you watch TV shows, and at night you want CinemaScope, while well you can switch between them with the touch of a button which is really cool. And speaking of buttons, the included remote is pretty much going to be the same remote that we've seen for a few years now. And even though it is kind of big and bulky, it is at least backlit and has pretty much every button you could ask for on a projector remote. So unlike some of the ultra short throw projectors I've reviewed on the channel, the LS11000 doesn't have a smart TV interface built in, but it does have a great menu system with a lot of options. You get a ton of picture adjustment options and you get separate settings for the different picture modes. And you're gonna get five picture modes. You have dynamic mode, vivid mode, bright cinema, cinema and natural mode. Considering I like bright projectors, I did like bright cinema mode a lot, but I found myself using cinema mode for movies since it did a much better job with contrast. And the built-in picture settings really didn't require much tweaking to get a great looking image, which is surprising since it uses a blue laser. I didn't find it necessary, but extra calibration options are always welcome, and this projector has lots of them. Now, as far as brightness goes, I measured the brightness in its brightest mode and got just over 2,500 lumens, which is about right on par with Epson's 2500 lumen claim. And when it comes to watching SDR content, the LS11000 
2000 looks absolutely fantastic as I anticipated. I instantly noticed the higher resolution over the 5050 UB. The image is really sharp and has fantastic focus uniformity, which I've personally found to be an underrated metric. The new ZX processor does a great job with upscaling and lower resolution content still looks good even on my 135 inch screen. The color reproduction is also great considering the equal color and white brightness. This is one of those things that's hard to explain, but the colors are incredibly bright and vivid, especially when compared to most DLP projectors. Considering the LS11000 has slightly lower brightness, I thought I'd notice it, but it looked like it was still just as bright as my 5050UB. All right, moving on to HDR content and considering how well the 5050UB performed with HDR, I'd say the bar was set pretty high. So there's an HDR setting which allows you to adjust the tone mapping to your personal taste. I found that depending on the movie, I prefer having the setting somewhere between five and eight. And the HDR performance from these projectors is great. It produced nice shadow detail with pretty good black levels. With certain content, I could see a small amount of white clipping with really bright scenes, but overall it does a fantastic fantastic job with HDR. There's a dynamic contrast setting and I found that turning it on and setting it to high speed produced the best looking image. This setting does a great job of improving contrast without it being too distracting. And it did a great job producing shadow detail without looking gray like other projectors and the black levels were pretty close to the 5050UB even though I think the 5050UB has the slight edge. And of course we can't do an Epson review without talking about gaming. So I measured the input lag and got just under 20 milliseconds with 4k at 60 hertz which is fantastic for a higher end home theater projector 1080p at 120 hertz increased the input lag to around 30 milliseconds so 4k at 60 is going to give you the least amount of lag projectors that produce the type of image quality you get from this projector usually have much higher input lag or they're not as bright so it's kind of like you get the best of both worlds here Okay, so with the LS11000 being laser powered, how does that affect fan noise? Well, when you increase the laser brightness to 100% or use some of the brighter picture modes, you can definitely hear the fan spin up, but I found the LS11000 to actually be quieter than my 5050UB. Now, considering it uses less power and produces less heat, this kind of makes sense. All right, so now that we've talked all about the LS11000, what does the LS12000 offer that you don't get with the 11000? Aside from the price, the first thing you'll notice is different about the two units is that the LS11000 has a white body while the 12000 has a black body. Now, as far as specs, the 12000 is capable of higher contrast and slightly more brightness with the 2700 ANSI lumen rating. The LS12000 measured closer to 2600 ANSI lumens, which is a bit lower than the claimed 2700 rating. And compared to the LS11000, the small brightness increase was noticeable, but only when compared side by side. But the biggest difference between these models on paper is the contrast. The LS11000 has a claimed 1.2 million to one contrast ratio, while the LS12000 doubles it with 2.5 million to one. This looks like a pretty significant jump, but I actually found it was hardly noticeable in my theater room. I'd argue that most people probably wouldn't really find the difference worth the extra thousand dollars, but if you are picky about contrast, the difference is there. The LS12000 also comes with a ceiling mount as well as anamorphic lens modes, which makes it a better fit for dedicated home theaters. And lastly, the 12000 also comes with a three year warranty as opposed to two years from the 11000. All right, so as I say in every projector review, no projector is perfect. So let's get into the things I think could be better on the LS11000 and 12000. Well, the first thing is the lack of 3D. Now I know there are a bunch of people out there who think 3D is dead, but there are quite a few 3D fans left out there in the home theater community who pride themselves on their 3D movie collection. And finally is the lack of auto iris and dynamic tone mapping. Neither of these are deal breaker for me as I was perfectly fine with manually adjusting the HDR setting when necessary and the dynamic contrast function makes up for the lack of auto iris, but I'm sure some people may consider it as a downgrade. Overall, I think these are great successors to the older 5050UB and 6050UB. I wasn't quite sure if I'd noticed the difference in clarity going to a certified 4K image, but it was definitely noticeable. I sit about nine feet away from a 135 inch screen and the increase in clarity made this a worthy upgrade. 
I think as long as you're not looking for 3D that the LS11000 sits in a pretty unique spot. This projector produces a great looking image and has lots of installation options, great color accuracy, high brightness, and low input lag. It's incredibly difficult if not nearly impossible to get all of those things in a single projector even if you're spending much more. And again, if you're looking to buy the LS11000, be sure to go to our channel affiliate projectorscreen.com or use the links in the video description to make sure you're getting the best possible possible deal. And I do have a few more videos coming up on some of the stuff I've been promising you guys. And I also have a channel update coming as I will be making some slight changes to the channel. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on those new videos. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.